Happy Memorial Day, everybody. Uh, it is Monday, Memorial Day. Just had some burgers and brats, and now I'm starting on a couple of beers. But that's it. I'm so full. I don't even know if one beer, if I could even drink one beer. Uh, I wanted to um, show you something. I haven't uh, made any videos in a couple of three weeks now. You know, a couple of you guys probably saw my uh, little medicine bag. Did you see that? Uh, I have my new flint and steel in. Um, I was out hiking in the desert the other day and I just looked down at my feet as I was walking along the trail and there was a piece of quartz laying just right in the middle of the trail. And I had read or seen something on YouTube about how there was a correlation between uh, quartz and flint or chert. And uh, so I grabbed it and it took me a couple of days but uh, I grabbed my steel a couple of days later. And sure enough, I was able to throw spark off that quartz, and I, had, I thought I had seen that, but it was kind of nice to know that, that it actually works. Uh, I kind of um, broke it up a little bit today because it was a, not that big around. Um, not real sharp on the edges, so I broke it up into about four different pieces, and now it's pretty sharp on the edges and throws a pretty decent spark. And I got, my, uh, I got some uh, punk wood char and uh, got it lit with that quartz. So that was kind of fun. But I got another medicine bag a few weeks ago and I wanted to um, stain it. The first one I stained with uh, brown writ dye, just regular cotton fabric dye, and it worked really well. I'm pretty happy with it. I'll show it to you here in a minute. Uh, and I got another bag that looks exactly like that. They're deer skin. But they're, it's kind of a, you ever seen those leather work gloves? that uh, have that nice bright yellow color to them. That's how these pouches come. That's why I stained or uh, dyed that one. I'm gonna dye the new one too. And I know that there's an old way that the Native Americans used to use uh, by uh, staining it with uh, red ochre. And they also had yellow ochre. And uh, honestly, until a couple of uh, weeks ago, I thought ochre was uh, some kind of a plant. But as it turns out, it's uh, kind of like maybe a sandstone or that sort of thing, the red ochre, that uh, has a lot of iron ore in it. So it's kind of a rust color. Uh, <clears throat> and I don't know how they did it way back in the day, but uh, I've read online that a good way to do it is to break it up real good and uh, mix it up with some linseed oil. I was up in the mountains the other day in an area I don't usually go to, and I was looking for that. Um, Instead, I had found some uh, some wild rhubarb, <laughs> which was cool, but uh, I didn't see any red oak or anything that I thought might be that. And then I was driving back down here into the valley and uh, just happened right on the side of the road, right where this cliff came down and touched the edge of the road. Um, there's this really bright red rock there. And so I turned around and came back up the hill and found a place to park, got out and looked over or walked over to it and picked it up and it was like really brittle. It kind of, it fell apart in my hands. Well, this stuff that I can turn into sands by squeezing it with my hands. It's pretty, uh, you know, it can be pretty powdery. It's pretty soft. So uh, I think that's what I'm going to try to do today. You can put like herbs and that sort of thing in there for medicinal purposes, but I like the idea of, uh, you know, I just started using the flint and steel and uh, I really like it and I kind of like to have two pouches. Uh, so let's get into the garage where everything is and let's check it out. All right, here's my original medicine bag. You can just, you know, it's got a nice long lanyard to it so you can just hang it around your neck. Show you what's in here. Got a little bit of char cloth and some jute twine. Here's part of that quartz I was telling you about. See that okay? This has got some sharp edges now. It works pretty well. I'm really happy that uh, I didn't just pass that by. There's my little steel. There's a little bit of flint that I have in there too. There's another piece. You guys know John over at Intense Angler, right? Uh, you should. He's got a great channel. I've learned a lot of stuff from him. He had a video um, a few months ago now, during the winter, 
that uh, he took these little Nivea cans. Take that Ranger band off there. And he made the little stoves out of them. See how thin it is? Just little alcohol stoves. And I was going to do that. I actually had the parts for it. And then I started thinking about my flint and steel, which I had just kind of gotten recently. And learning about, uh, you know, being able to char uh, punk wood like you can a uh, cotton t-shirt. And how you can usually use a flint and steel and strike that punk wood char. Get a little coal, put your grass bundle there, basically right there on top of it. And uh, blow on that ember until uh, you get your grass bundle lit. So anyway, I, I uh, this is old punk wood. And uh, I charred it up a little while ago. And... Uh, you know, it's perfect. It's, these are, aren't very big tens, but, uh, you know, they're big enough to fit that much in there. You don't, you don't need much at all. So the lid goes on. I did put a little hole in there uh, just for when I'm charring it. I don't really need it. I, and these, and they, they kind of shrink up. I mean, especially if they have a little dampness to them, the uh, punk wood, I mean. Um, it'll really, they'll shrink down. So, you know, you can really stuff this thing full and just shove the lid on as hard as you can. But then a little ranger band goes around and covers the hole, keeps things dry. Uh, works real well. In this particular case, I use my MSR pocket rocket to char the wood. Uh, doesn't matter. Worked well. So anyway, that so this little uh, guy here is really great. I mean, I really like the color. It's kind of a dark brown dye. Uh, worked really well, and so I'm real happy with it. This is the new one. See the difference in color? I'm going to change that to, hopefully, a red color. Just hang on, and I'll show you what I mean. All right. As you can see, I mean, it just comes apart. See what I mean? I'm thinking, no matter what color this is, and we know what's going to happen when I mix it with the linseed oil, it's going to darken up. Um... And uh, this little pouch isn't so expensive that I can't do a little experimentation. So that's what I'm going to do. This is a gallon uh, water bottle that I cut the top of it off. And uh, basically what I'll do is I'll make this mixture of this red color and with this oil. All right, let's break some of this up in here. I don't really know how much. to get it as powdery as I can. kind of an interesting color when it's done because, you know, the linseed oil's got kind of a orangey-yellow tint to it. Nice color. to it and a little more oil. Okay, that's a pretty nice color. Um, I was going to use a brush. I think I'm just going to, well, you know what, let me start out with the brush. All right. color. I 
Now what my guess is, what's going to happen is when this dries, the little bits of dust and powder from the rock will be able to just shake it right off of there. That's the other side. I'm going to get those strands too. I think probably the best way to do that is just basically get my hands down in the uh, die and work it. And on the inside of the bag, it's going to be this yellow color, so uh, I probably only want to put my hand down there and rub it around a little bit so it gets stained in there too. So, uh, so far, so good. I really dig in the color. All right, I'm done staining it. Um, you can see it really dries out. The oil just kind of mixes in with everything. And you wind up not having as much liquid in there. So I definitely needed a little more oil. And the reason that I haven't thrown that out, because it's such a nice, rich red color, that I thought that if I uh, decided I wanted to put another coat of stain on here, uh, that all I'd have to do was add some more linseed oil to that and uh, put it on. Anyway, there you go. I am going to uh, take this outside and hang it up on a hook. Let the sun kind of bake it for a while. It may uh, or may not help, but it'll at least get it to dry. Okay, and there it is. And so uh, when it dries, uh, as you can see, if you look real close, you can kind of see the uh, Basically, there's dirt on it. I can just shake that off, and it'll still be a kind of a nice dark red color, but uh, might as well put another coat on there if, it, if I think it needs it after that. So, uh, But then when it's all said and done, once I think I've got enough on there, and it's dried, and I get the uh, all the excess uh, dirt and rock off there, then we're just going to put it under uh, some water. and. Uh, See if we can get it set. So let's just let that hang out here for about an hour or so. Since it's got oil rather than since it's oil based rather than water based, I really want to make sure that it dries. Alright, it's still a little damp. But I think I'm gonna take off some of this ochre. see that it comes off. It's kind of gritty. It really kind of needs to sit out for a while longer. What I was going to do is I was going to shake out some of that dirt. But I think I'll leave it for a while. I'm using this little stick here to put inside of it. Hangs. So I can get down inside there, so I'm going to uh, hang it back up. Just let it uh, hang out for a while and it'll get more dry. Looking good though. I like that color. So far, it looks great though. I really like it. thing into the garage. So I decided to uh, go ahead and grab it. It's been hanging up out there in the sun for another couple of hours. And it's got direct sunlight. It's the heat of the day right now. 
Um, so I started thinking about this. Um, what do I want to do? Do I want to rinse it in water? Do I want to put another coat on it? And I decided that since I'm kind of experimenting uh, using the red ochre, I'm not really knowing exactly uh, how it's going to turn out. I uh, thought, thought I might take, uh, you know, or I thought I might take it one step at a time. And I've got one coat on here. I didn't let it soak in. I kind of rubbed it in. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, wipe off this excess as much as I can. And uh, kind of shake it out a little bit. And if I can get most of that stuff off there, I'll be pretty happy with that. But if it doesn't come off, then... I'll probably have to uh, maybe rinse it or something like that. I don't, I'm don't. i trying to keep from rinsing it. But I may have to anyway. So, let's see here. I really like that color a lot. And it does the uh, sandiness. You can kind of see it right there. And that's just grit from the rock. But you can kind of rub that off. real gritty. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it outside to the faucet and we're going to put a good rinse on it and uh, see what it does. It can, well, it'll dry out again. As a matter of fact, there's so much oil in it from putting the linseed oil on here, the water may just kind of beat up off of it and it may be protected already. Wouldn't you think? Hang just Hang on, I'll be back, okay? Okay. Just rinsed it off. Uh, my biggest fear was that everything that I had put on there was just going to come off. It didn't. Uh, as you can see, uh, even though these are different color on one side than the other, which is really kind of cool, uh, you don't see any yellow coming through. Except for just a little touch right there. And then on the other side, a couple of streaks of it. A little bit right there. A little more in here. Uh, not bad. I can always retouch that. Um, it's going to lighten up anyway. If it's like a, if, if, if it's anything like dye that I used on the last one that I did, the first one, uh, it'll lighten up as it dries because now it's soaking wet and I'm going to let it uh, dry. Um, I'm just going to put it in the house and let it dry naturally rather than in the sun or out in the warm air. And in the, and then tomorrow I'm going to, uh, depending on how it looks, I may touch it up or uh, I may hang it up in the sun so that that color will set in there real good. So anyway, pretty happy with that. I'm not too worried about that yellow coming through, uh, though I wish it weren't there. Uh, the reason it, you could see those little streaks right there is when I rinsed it off, I kind of like gave it a little squeeze, and it being folded right there, that's where where uh, that kind of came through. So uh, maybe that means that it needs another coat on there. Uh, or maybe it means that the next time I do one of these and I use the red ochre, uh, don't um, squeeze it when you rinse it. Not a big deal. Just let it dry. And then uh, you won't have those streaks. The other thing is, too, you can take something simple like a stick, and while the ochre is wet on there and drying, you could maybe make some striations that might be kind of cool, like a cross hatching, uh, put your initials in there, uh, put uh, your logo from your bushcraft uh, channel. And I'd really like to do that too. 
so maybe next time. Uh, but I'll definitely uh, be getting more of these because um, I really like them for the flint and steel uh, kit. I uh, also am going to, at some point later on in the summer, buy a sheet um, of buck skin, maybe even elk skin, and try my hand at making one or two of these, and uh, maybe like a little haversack, that kind of thing. So, uh, experimentation on its way. But anyway, there you go. It's almost uh, brown, but it's a reddish brown, and... Uh, I figure that by the time morning rolls around and it's pretty dry, it'll look more like this, which is kind of what I was looking for. But, uh, anyway, um, looks good. We'll see how it looks in the morning, and we'll just go from there. been in the sun for a little while looks like let's take it on down take a look at it boy I sure like that color it just seems to have a certain feel and it's just real soft and supple it's great very nice. I really like it a lot. And so there you go. There's my finished product. I uh, really enjoyed doing this. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me stain this with the red ochre and the linseed oil. If I had had some animal fat, uh, this would have been stained in a very, very traditional way that uh, dates back, who knows? thousands of years maybe. Native Americans did it this way um, and I'm starting to read more about uh, this particular red ochre stain being used in all kinds of ways um, from making artifacts, staining leathers, even uh, staining skin to protect your skin against the sun. Anyway, there you go. Beautiful. I like it a lot. Hope you did too. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate uh, your comments and your views. So please leave with any of those that you like. Um, and you have a good one. I'll see you out there somewhere, okay?